feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign Quincy, it's Friday. You know what that means? We're going to the strip club. Woohoo! I'm just kidding. We're going to the vet. Welcome back to FAQ The Madness. We respectfully exercise our First Amendment right to publish interactions with government officials through the unbiased view of a camera. Let's jump into another rep. Recording. What you doing here, buddy? Your owner's probably looking for you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hands, hands. Let me see your hands. Stop resisting. Oh, my God. You don't feel like it's going to jerk you off when you're running on it? No, no but it, if it did, I'd be... A uh, now, I don't know what he's going to say, but this guy right here, I don't even know what his name is. I'll probably put it, a link in the description, but I love his stuff. I really do. He's so funny. And he comes up, and I think he's an Air Force veteran, in fact. Um, anybody who knows, put in a comment, check it out. Uh, shout out to this guy. I wish I knew his name right now, but I will figure it out and I'll put it in the comments. But I love this guy. A hell of a lot more motivated to work out. <laughs> Say, listen, did Amen. you know the treadmills were originally invented as a torture device for prisoners of war? Nah. Now you do. <laughs> now you do. That's the point. I recognize how hard this is for people, and I recognize how hard it is for me. But I have a certain set of skills that allow me to deal with this stuff. And then I realized with gratitude, optimism is sustainable. If you can find something to be grateful for, then you find something to look forward to, and you carry on. Write that down. With gratitude, optimism is sustainable. No shit. Wow. I mean, Michael J. Fox, if you don't know the story of Michael J. Fox, you've been living under a rock. Everybody knows who he is, what he's done, and you probably are aware of the plight that he has now. But I mean, he says something that is so powerful. It's so powerful, I can't remember exactly what it is, but let's listen to what it is, what he says again. But it's it's directly related to his circumstances. And he's he he acknowledges how blessed he is uh, having done all the things that he is, but then he still has this body that is not working the way it needs to. So this is for people and I recognize how hard it is for me, but I have a certain set of skills that allow me to deal with this stuff. And then I realize with gratitude, Optimism is sustainable. With gratitude, optimism is sustainable. I mean, I, I happen to think of myself as a very optimistic person. And if you are thankful for something, for things, the things that you have, and maybe even some of the things that you aspire to have and don't have, um, you can be even thankful of those things. Then optimism is sustainable. Oh, that's 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 powerful. If you can find something to be grateful for, then you find something to look forward to, and you carry on. Write that down. With gratitude, optimism is sustainable. There's a moment when every boy realizes no one's coming to save him, and that's when he becomes a man. And some boys never get there and stay children forever. Wow. Now. <laughs> I mean, I never knew exactly where he got it from, but the notion makes very, very clear sense to me. Todd has said this before in some of the rants or some of the, the uh, some of the things that he says, but he talks about what's going to happen when they come for your ass. Nobody's going to save you. He'll say that. It's like a fear statement. But the notion that there is a time there's a time that happened for me for myself when my mother told me that she taught me all the things that she could she gave us the tools my sister and I the tools in order for us to succeed or fail but hopefully succeed um, but the responsibility no longer rests on her shoulders but it is now my responsibility that's when I became a man I was homeless. I lived, I worked in the, at the Veterans Hospital in a program called the Therapeutic 
compensation or compensational therapy, something like that, where they allowed us to work. We were in a program where we had therapy frequently and um, and then you, you go home. I think I was living, I was moving towards, no, I wasn't even in housing yet. I hadn't gotten in housing yet. Um, but the bottom line is I was, I didn't have a place to stay and I would get off work and I would go to the library or I'd go somewhere and maybe eat, uh, uh, go to the library or something like that. But then I didn't have a place to go. So I'd go back on to the veterans, um, the VA, to the VA hospital and I go to the library after it was closed because I had badge access and uh, then I'd go to sleep and I'd wake up before, any, before it opened again. Sometimes doctors would come in the middle of the night and go into the library. At any rate, I did that for like two months. There does come a time where you realize no one's going to help you. That's when you have to become a man. That's when you have to become a woman. In the U.S., 1,500 police departments now use drones as first responders. A shift toward modern policing captured by this scene in 2020's Oscar-nominated sci-fi short film, Please Hold. Chula Vista, California pioneered this in 2018, deploying drones to thousands of 911 calls, leading to numerous citations and arrests. Well, now cities like New York and Denver are following suit, using drones for everyday calls to help officers focus on more critical tasks. Drones provide real-time video to operators, allowing them to assess situations quickly. Drones, I mean, we, we've already seen the effect that drones have had in the in the war, Russia and Ukraine war. And I mean, can you imagine? I've seen images of, of soldiers running away from a drone and you just can't get away from it. And then there's some person up in the background or up and away remotely handling shit uh, and, and doing what they need to do. But now, of course, we have the policing going on. I mean, eyes are ever everywhere. Cameras are everywhere. There's no doubt about it. Um, but when will these, when will these drones right now? I, I, we, we, we understand that they're operating under the control of some person remotely, but like some of the movies that we've seen, we've seen plenty of movies, um, where the drone has, is not being controlled by someone specifically, but maybe by a directive. Um, a set of rules that lets them know when they can engage, etc. Uh, I mean, and even even human beings, human beings have a a problem with directives, um, rules of engagement, those kind of things. So I don't know. I don't know what I think about uh, drones. The I mean, obviously they have their place, but I think there's going to come a point where we ourselves may be opposed to seeing so many drones and decide if officer deployment is necessary. Now, for example, in Chula Vista, drones arrive at scenes nearly three minutes faster than officers. Chula Vista is not too far from where I grew up. I, um, my mother was in the Navy, so I lived in, in uh, San Diego proper. In fact, it was, it was a, an, a, a um, what do you call it? Suburb of San Diego called Penisquitos near Escondido, near Poway, um, near Mira Mesa, where um, Top Gun is. So Chula Vista is not too far from, from that. Despite challenges like limited range and high costs, the use of drones is poised to expand. And as this technology becomes more common, expect increased scrutiny and regulatory discussions from lawmakers and federal agencies. It's so funny. <laughs> the sleeping arrangements at my house, my wife and I. My wife is a cuddler. I mean, her her love language certainly is touch. My love language is not that. I don't necessarily like to be touched. I don't like to be feel like I'm trapped. So, I mean, I, in the middle of the night, she says, I'll kick off my covers. I kick the dogs away from us. The dogs do sleep with us. We have two big dogs. We have a boxer mix and we have a pit bull. Um, so Yoshi and Luigi. Obviously, we put them out of the room for. But sometimes we just want to 
cuddles and i'm okay with cuddling too so but it's funny because we have a huge bed uh and the space that this is talking about is mostly taken up by our dog so that's why i'm kind of laughing <laughs> trying to explain to you you're in the park after hours and you're committing a crime you have your idea really idea? no i don't have my id on me i need your name you are not, yeah, I'm not leave. giving you my name okay i'll take those in the scope stand up for me turn around face the car turn around face the car don't 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 put your hands on me pal if listen you, you are going to get hurt you are going to get hurt. Now, far too damn often we have cops who approach a situation recognizing or acknowledging or uh, intimating that the end result of this is going to be that you're going to get hurt. Not that we're going to come to an understanding and we're going to figure this out but that you're going to get hurt because I'm going to have to force you to do something. Even though I'm, even though I've been told or that the cop has been told that they are doing something wrong. I haven't committed a crime. I don't have to ID myself, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on of how we try to let cops know that I haven't done anything. I'm not doing anything else. I don't have a gun on me. Um, I'm not armed. He's not armed. Um, you're hurting him. I mean, far too often we hear these types of statements made by other people other than the cops. And then when we go to try to determine and see what actually happened, there's no footage. Surprise! Or it was stopped in the middle. Or not turned on or something like that. There's not enough evidence. Or the evidence doesn't show. I mean, the rulings that we get are or analogous or analogous to to that what we see on the NFL replays, instant replays, when there's not enough evidence to overturn the call, the ruling on on the uh, on the field. That's so interesting. I never thought of it that way. But isn't it inter interesting that you have to, with the NFL, you have to go with the first call, and then in order to change it, you have to have compelling evidence that shows that it wasn't that that so in this instance we have officers who make the decisions that they make on occasion that are oftentimes fatal decisions and then after the fact they determine if it was the correct thing to do where they say shoot first and ask questions later i think this i think that's problematic but let's just see what his take is. Here's the most common problem you'll see with bad officers. When the because I told you so method doesn't work, mm -hmm. they don't try to de-escalate. They don't try to explain like a human to human way. They ramp it up, it escalates, and boom, what does he do? He goes right to hands on. And for those of you who don't know this, he quietly goes on his radio and uses police terms to tell the other units that are on the way to come fast, which means he has Snip no intention to de-escalate this. He wants them to get there quick because he knows what's about to happen. What the hell? You're way too close, pepper spray. Now, I think I've seen this guy, and I kind of dig what it, what's going to happen because I think what's going to happen is they're going to create a tune out of it. I can't remember, but I, I can hear it. I can kind of see what's going to happen, right? So let's see how it goes. All right, bet. Woman, you're way too close. <laughs> Nice. How about some overly aggressive gun sounds? All right. Yeah, that's aggressive. And how about a nice vocal to fit the circumstances? Closer. 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 All together now. <laughs> ah, nice. I like it. I do like it. I like it. 
I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Nice. We're done. I do not remember what this is, but that's kind of freaky right there. You know what I realized when I turned 43? I hadn't realized it my whole life. I'll tell you in 60 seconds. Six unpleasant discoveries about our lives. One, the easiest way to get depressed is to start comparing yourself to other people. Two, the biggest killer of our dreams is dependence on other people's no opinions. shit. That is... <laughs> I mean, he started off hard as hell he did and it was so true uh but the, but the message is so cool i don't know about this i don't know about this i don't i don't know if i get this mask but anyway it's kind of cool so let's start it over it's at, at, at age 43 i'm 53 so 10 years prior to this did i have the same kind of thoughts let's see you know what i realized when i turned 43 i hadn't realized it my whole life I'll tell you in 60 seconds. Six unpleasant discoveries about our lives. One, the easiest way to get depressed is to start comparing yourself to other people. Two, the biggest killer of our dreams is dependence on other people's opinions. Three, you can't make everyone happy. If you try, you will lose yourself. You cannot make everyone happy. That is so damn true. And you know what? I wish that the, I, we call it a community, but I told you I know what that means. And when I, when I say that, when I say community, we think of 1A auditors, the other side of it, frauditor trolls or anti-audit uh, people uh, call them frauditors. Um, and there's always some type of beef going on. There's always a beef. Where's the beef? Uh, I mean, I just I just today listened to most of of uh, some content uh, from I mean, it happened to be for public safety and it was have at the same time the angry vet um and I, I i i i dig both of those people and who knows what they're going through each of them individually um and i can see them leaning on each other on some level but they brought people on and each of those people that came on were had this taunting type uh vibe that they put off why do we have to do that I don't think that there's there is a video a second maybe I mean for, forget the the video maybe a second where you find me taunting someone even under the worst circumstances that I not taunt an individual my desire is not to taunt someone my desire is to break it down to the level that I need to break it down and say you're wrong sir or ma'am um, we all know that what happened with me, but you can't please everybody. And if you think that you can and you try, you're going to lose yourself. I mean, that's, that's powerful. Fourth, don't react to people who don't like you. Most of the time, these people don't like themselves. Fifth, it's the biggest thing. Damn, amen. I mean, preach, my man, preach in this world is in our heads or as you say facts <laughs> facts the biggest addiction in the world is the comfort zone the people who are living the life you dream of are not smarter than you are they just overcame the fear of taking the first step so it says it says baby bird expects worm to jump into his mouth because he was fed like that mm, like what does that mean like you mean the the so like in the beginning, right, doesn't a mama bird come and, and, you know, they open their mouth and they drop the bird at that. This guy is, is kind of older, obviously more mature, um, but maybe he was domesticated or something. I mean, what, what did he do? What did he do to get this way? Which is a very interesting concept which is why i understand why this person brings this up because we see generation after generation of people black people white people um asians you know arabic people you know islamic religion i mean whatever religion we see um generation after generation people doing the same thing culture right and have results that can be detrimental or results that are positive i mean granted there's some the results that are positive but this is the thing 
Now, I mean, that's, that's fascinating now that I'm thinking about it. What does it take to create an individual or a generation of people that expect things to be given to them where they don't have to work for it, right? And he said to me, my grandfather walked 10 miles to work every day. My father walked five. I'm driving a Cadillac. My son is in a Mercedes. Said my grandson will be in a Ferrari. But he said my great grandson will be walking again. So I asked him, I said, well, why is that? And he said to me, tough times create strong men. Strong men create easy times. Easy times create weak men. Weak men create tough times. He said to me, many will not understand, but you have to raise warriors. But I'm going to tell you, I, I don't know why. And it, this, this is happening to me more and more often. I'm sure it happens to, to you all as well whereby you see something and you see like a little glimmer or something like that and you're always wondering if it's real or not i mean i find myself doing that all the time where i think that ai has created this um i mean it seems reasonable that this that this bird is going after a worm that's going away from it um but it seems kind of ai-ish I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Because everybody got to have somebody around that can check them. Yeah. And checking is just a form of correction. Yeah. It ain't no, I could check him at any time. He could check me at any time. Either one of us do some dumb shit, we going to check each other. No, then we not doing that because we don't, mm -hmm. do, you feel what I'm saying? So especially the guys, if you don't got somebody around that could be like, yo, man, it's crazy here. Get the fuck in the truck, man. We out. Mm -hmm. You in trouble. Mm -hmm. There's a saying that we should try to seek to understand rather than being understood. I had no understanding then. Now I got just a little bit more understanding. So uh, I, 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 I understand. Six wisdom of life. Now this is another segment of this guy. I like him. I'm six rules for young guys to get into the richest 1% of people. One, the woman you choose will be the most important decision you'll ever make. Amen. Two, that is so damn true. I mean, my life has changed so much because of my wife, the relationship that we have built, um, the sacrifices that we have made for each other on our own, the types of things that normally when we weren't together that we would have done without even thinking of the other causes us to think a different way, which causes our, our relationship to flourish. So, it, I mean, I, I am a believer that and, and, and that's not to say that I haven't had good women in my in my lives previously. Um, shout out to my first wife. As soon as you make a large amount of money, buy assets. Three, keep your social circle small. Fourth, the less you talk, the more they listen. Fifth, if you're living in past victories, one day you'll wake up with defeat. Sixth, personal victories lead to public victories. So this is what I learned. Hey. Everybody that you fight is not your enemy, and everybody that helps you is not your friend. That's what life taught me. Yeah. Man. Everybody that you fight is not your enemy. Everybody that so this is what I learned. Yeah. Everybody that you fight is not your enemy, and everybody that helps you is not your friend. Everybody that helps you is not your friend. Man, that is so crazy true, man. Facts. That is total facts man i think if we if there was more more of us that realized that i mean we, we would look deeper into the reasons why and it's, it's and that's so opposite of what we were what we learn when people say never look a gift horse in the mouth right which means don't ask, don't ask where it came from. Don't question the fact that somebody's giving you something. But sometimes if somebody's helping you, there may be a reason uh, for you to have alarm. I mean, I think it's fascinating that he says it. How he says it, there's pain in his voice when he says it too. Hey, yo, bro, what's up? You Mexican, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, bro, serious question, bro. Do you know the difference between corn and, and flour tortilla? 
I mean, one's just made out of corn and one's made out of flour, brother. Like, yeah. Oh, all right, all right. Baby, I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you. Thank yeah, you. yeah. Hey, excuse me, man. Got a quick question. Ah. You know <laughs> that is so funny. Oh, my gosh. I didn't even get it. I didn't even... I didn't even see that coming at all. I mean, I didn't, I don't know why, but I didn't see it coming. I don't even know what. what. <laughs> hey, excuse me, man. Got a quick question. Do you know how to pick a watermelon? <laughs> what? I was asking if you know how to pick a watermelon. <laughs> you trying to be funny? No, nah, you're over here asking me if I know how to pick flour tortillas, corn tortillas, tostadas. <laughs> BBC really stands for? What does it stand for? Big black cock. If I ever see you again, I want to start wearing one of those black bonnets so I can be more black. I lost my beautiful daughter four years ago to cancer. Oh, and I had oh my God. Since she oh passed. I'm new God. And that's cool. Now, you know what? I'm not even going to lie. Comedy comedy laughter those kind of things has its place and i think that there are a lot of comedians out there that do a lot of different things uh to help people laugh and to cope with the bullshit that we have to deal with in life i mean this world is kind of effed up right now i mean we are on the verge of of uh of a of an election and we know how divided our country is but people do need laughter and this guy said that he hasn't felt happy just because, I don't know, I don't even know what this what led up to this particular scene, but he's happy. He said, I haven't felt this happy since he passed. Now, the exact flip side of that same coin, I think that there's some cats out there that are doing some prankish type stuff, and they just simply just need their ass whipped because they're going a little bit far and extreme. I think you need to kind of, uh, you know, I think just a good little ass whipping one time will, will probably take that, snatch that out of them. Or maybe they, you know, they got it like that. And so they don't have to worry about anything. But, you know, but people need to stop playing something today. sometimes. I think she likes it. she like you? No, she likes you. she like you? She wants some BBC. <laughs> Oh my I god. I ain't gonna offend nobody. I'm <laughs> all hard and stiff. You gotta keep it that way. There's no way he should be saying this type of stuff. Got my lucky vomit off, boys. Stroke that thing, cuz of. Oh, do you drunk? Oh my god. <laughs> that is funny. Uh, I'm sure someone, some of you need to watch that guy. He is funny. And some of the things he does is crazy. Oh, like this guy. Adorable. Oh, hell no. 73. 73? I'm 73. Damn. Oh, my God. This woman. I mean, I'm just going to tell you right now, just from what I can see, this, it says this Karen could have walked away. She could have walked away, for sure. She could have walked away, absolutely. But she most likely doesn't. I mean, the handwriting is all over the wall. This look at look at look at <laughs> look at her stance. She's like, I, the best thing is for you to. She's trying to tell her. Trying to tell her. There you go. See, I, I think now, just looking at the looking at what she just did, I think the best way for her to have handled it is kind of like what she did. She didn't like pull on, like you know, hit her. She escorted her ass forcefully, mind you, out the door. I don't see anything wrong with it. <laughs> I am against violence. I'm for self-defense. Hey, Mr. Brown, what's up? What's the quote of the day? If friends were money, I would rather have four quarters than a hundred pennies. 
Oh my god. If friends were money, I would rather have four quarters than a hundred pennies. <laughs> Facts. Facts for sure. Facts. Hey, Mr. For Brown, sure. what's up? Facts of the madness. Uh, I mean, I have I have a few friends. I do. Um, some of them you I have been inter introduced to you. Some of them I haven't. Uh, one of them that you're gonna meet is uh, Steve Jaddick. We have known each other for a long time. I do consider him a friend, and I think we're gonna become closer because of the story that he has, and the ordeal that which he went through, and him coming to me asking that uh, I introduce it to my audience. But you have four good friends. They are way better than a hundred, uh, you know, hundred of them that can't even really do anything for you. <laughs> Although, when you think about it, though, too, if you had 100 friends versus four quarters, I mean, that's more. And I'm, t I'm talking if they were all equal, right? Equal. Um, but if you have, you know, four true good friends, you're going to be able to, to utilize. Listen, nigga, you just got roasted. Preach. Nigga, you need to quit social media because you ain't no star. You need to find yourself one of them jobs, nigga. Okay, now that is likely a really light skinned brother. That's what I'm guessing. Listen, uh, nigga, you see. just got roasted. I don't know. All right. He, he, he's got some of the features of a black man. Ninja.jobdaily. I mean, I, I, I gotta know. I gotta know. It says Nin Ah. I think it says N I N H J dot job dot daily. I just want to make sure I see what I see. N I H J A. What is that? N I H J A. What kind of craziness is that? N I H. N I H. J A. I mean, I can't even find it, but we're gonna have to we're gonna have to check him out because he does i mean he kind of has some of them nigga you need to quit social media because you ain't no star you need to find yourself one of them jobs nigga. and maybe that might be somebody voiceover quincy it's friday you know what that means we're going to the strip club That's good. That. That's cute. Thank you for watching. If you have a video you'd like for us to cover, use the submit link in the description or pinned comment. If you enjoyed this one, consider subscribing and hit the bell to be notified of future content. Be sure to check out all of the other content we have for your edutainment. We will continue to respectfully exercise our First Amendment rights and published interactions we have with government officials. Remember to like, Share and leave a comment. It's the easiest way for you to let us know your thoughts about our channel. I want to be the greatest. Everybody on the face shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest. I make this every day and I'm impatient. Hoping one day I blow up from the basement. Statement, the top is so vacant. I don't need shit that I think is amazing. Waiting for my day when I'm playing. Sold out shows for a thousand faces. Hey, give me that crown. Get in my way and to be put down. It ain't your place. All this my town. If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now. I'm losing it, the noose it fits, some loose shit, a stupid myth You choose to live or choose to dip, you choose to fight or lose your grip and lose a gift, oh.